Education Bill. All right, so uh, we're going to call roll. Gostark is here. How? Here. David? Here. Bilbo? Yep. Fisher? Here. Merdews? And Paul is going to try to come late, but he may not make it. Uh, Degolia is here, and Lewis is here, and thank you, staff. And our agenda tonight, so we have some minutes to approve. Do I see those in the package? Are they in there? I want to make sure we actually have minutes to approve before I ask to approve them. They were in the package. There they are. Yeah. Oh, they're the one that looks like an agenda. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It says that oh, Fisher okay. was unable to teleconference excuse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they got that. Either. Yeah, I wasn't reading that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Any other comments on the minutes? No? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. So moved in a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining. Oh, yeah, we're here. Got it. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Nope. Thank you. We're done. Um, I skipped over, sorry, public comments. Items on the agenda. Any member for the public would like to make a comment on something not on our agenda? I see no, no public comments. We move on. Thank you. Um, regular <coughs> agenda. So um, before we start through the agenda, I want to talk about timing. Because uh, I mentioned to George last week, this is a this is a lot to do in an hour. This is too much to do in an hour. And so, what I wanted to have a discussion with everybody is: Are we going to go longer and delay the count the session with council? They'll join us, but we'll just keep going. Or are we going to trim something out of here? Because uh, what I'm I'm not prepared to do is the, the in particular the landscape plans that could easily take an hour, and I don't want to shortcut that. And so we could see how it goes with the other two, but make a call before we start that item. And Chris, I know you're here, but it's just, I think we have 20 minutes allocated to it, and it's insane. So we, we, that that's, doesn't, you won't even finish your presentation at 20 minutes. So we would have zero discussion of it. So does that sound good? Well, do the first two items, see how we're doing, yeah. and then make a decision, and then, okay. Um, oh, and which first two, the A and B? Update on the feedback. So that's going to be uh, that's the architectural right, plan. Right. That's this presentation. We've got one and A and C, and then um, use the uh, PD plans and roll that into the sustainability mm -hmm. time. Time. I'm not, I was just going to go straight through A, B, okay. C, D. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? No, that's fine. And then, okay. but before we start C, I want to make a call on how far can we get and what are what are our expectations for that time? Because. What, what I've heard this group say recently, and I felt myself, is we didn't have sufficient time to discuss things, and I don't want to put that pressure on this committee. Okay, I don't want to be unrealistic. We, or we may see a presentation, but whole discussion for the next time, or we'll, we'll make that decision to go. Okay. okay, so with that, Pauline or Adam, do you guys want to go ahead with? Yeah, Adam's going to kick it off. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we have uh, a brief presentation. I'll go through as fast as I can. Thank you. The discussion. Uh, it's really about summarizing the comments that were brought up that we have for uh, CCAC meetings. There's two items on our agenda. One is a lobby design, uh, primarily the stair that gets you from you know, floor one to floor two, and then also the council chamber layout design. It really, really focuses on a lot of the furniture, how it gets stored, how AV works. So I'm going to go through that as efficiently as I can. So looking back at the comments uh, regarding the lobby stair, was eliminate the open space below the upper stair to save money on the stringer and the underside of the stair detail. Replace the guardrail shown at the lower stair landing with a wall mounted rail. So we started to look at that and uh, I'll go through that in our options. Um, but we did some code research and so I'm going to show two options um, and really just to, to 
long time to think that might be a small presentation area or, or not a stage necessarily, but an area to address a group of people in there. Right, so that's the curved design of it. This, that length and width is just about five foot four inches by six foot two, so just about 30 square feet when you get to the top of that. And then you have uh, three steps to get you down to the lowest level of, of the lobby. Right? It's, it's visible from when you walk into that front door, you see that spilling down. You walk up and then you turn left and you head up to the, to the second one. That's the current design. And that ref is reflected in this uh, three-dimensional rendering, right? Critical is that you enter here, you walk up, you turn 180, and you exit at the top of the landing. The landing and the entrance of the elevators are gathered together under that arch, which was an architectural reflection of kind of the front doors of, of, the, of, this, um, of the Civic Center, uh, of City Hall. Uh, but really, that starts to talk about all of those things coming together. Right? And this is what it looks like as you kind of, as you walk in, you see how that spills down. Again, we have this corner condition that we think might be a bit of a, of a concern. You might want to recommend what it would look like. And this is actually looking from the other side. If you're coming in from the Civic Center space, and just to kind of talk about the differences, we try to get rid of that upper rail. So really, you just see a decorative rail. You turn that corner. It helps with the width of why that feels. So it doesn't feel like you're going necessarily into chamber, but you're starting to get the full width of that stair as you wind up. But it is, <coughs> it is efficient, even very efficient. And I was thinking, excuse me, how much the width of the stair is? Uh, five foot, five foot four to five foot six. Okay. And I think code requirement is somewhere around 44 inches. I think it's, it's the tightest you can possibly get. It's another foot wide. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm not going to go to the alternate design, which actually, um, widens up that lower landing. So you see here on the ground floor, right, it went from 5'4 to 11 foot 2 and it got much wider. And that's about as wide as we can get it. What you see there, three feet, those are basically three steps to get you from that upper landing, right, down to that, that lower level. And that's as much as we can pull it out. We tried to really kind of work that to, but that's as much as we can pull it out. It's still about 6 foot 2 wide. So it's, it's now, it's twice as wide as the last design. Right? We think it's actually much more gracious as you walk in. It's a lot bigger. Um, you see it you know, really well as you walk in. In order to do that, we had to do a couple of things, and I want to kind of blow that up a little bit. Um, in order to widen that stair and flip it, we had to make the reception area and that police um, uh, lobby a little bit uh, more narrow. Uh, we had to compress this area where the, where the elevator is, but everything still works. Everything still works. We can't really move this line, it's a structural line, it's actually the ridge line of the, of the roof. Right? You really can't move that, that's a structural line there. And then what we're starting to show here, you see two feet minimum required, two feet minimum required. That's the code handrail requirement I was talking about. We can't change that. And it's 12 inches plus the width of your last tread, which is 12 inches. So just keep that in mind. So we couldn't spill it out this way more because you're starting to really impede on the entrance to the elevator. You know, uh, we could bring it down, you know, this way a little bit more if we really wanted to, but then it starts to really spill into that lobby space a bit. We felt that this was, was, was pretty helpful. Here's that corner condition that we're a little concerned about. You can see it there, right, um, in 3D. It flips the, uh, you know, at the top of the stairs, you, instead of turning left in the last design, you come up, you turn right. Mm -hmm. It moves it farther away from that elevator entrance. It creates a much, they're, they're spaced farther apart. Now, architecturally, there are ways we can tie them together. I'm just showing you where these, where these entrances would be. The spaces are farther apart, but what you gain on the ground floor is a much bigger lower landing there, right? A much larger lower landing. And that's what it looks like. You can see the, 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 you know, the difference. We saw this one last time, and I'm just, you know, and everybody preferred this one. Great. Adam, so what's the little uh, architectural detail on the second floor with mm -hmm. the other one? Uh, between the two arches on the second this floor. This is just thought of, about putting it's basically like a, it's window a little window that looks down. That you might be able to look down into that, that run coming up from the lower level. Uh -huh. And again, architecturally, you know, there are ways we could treat that surface of, I mean, we, we love the blank plaster. I think that's part of the architectural language of, of mission style. There are ways we could kind of brighten it up. But, you know, that, that kind of shows, I think, that you have more, more openings on that second floor, uh -huh. right, or, or appear to be openings. But we try to gather them up. Um, not as much symmetry. The last thing you recall there was that archway that was centered within that, within the, on that second floor. I'll go back to that in a second. But really what you gain is a much more generous uh, ground floor. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, 
Adam, that yeah. in turn going back toward the elevator, mm -hmm. is that a pony wall or a pole wall? It, uh, yeah, this area here? No, on the bottom floor. I think it's just the handrail. Exactly, it's a handrail. It's this view right here. So that, that no, no, to your, to the, the left, left. To the left where it goes back toward the elevator? Is that a full height wall or is that a pony wall? On, on the plan, you showed something sticking uh, out. You're showing that as a full height, I believe. Right? So it creates kind of a dead space in between the elevator and that wall? On the, on the area can, view. Can you, can you go back to the plan view? Right there. there. Yeah. Well, if you look at if this area you're calling the dead space, no, behind, behind, it. Oh, behind it. it, yeah, there's an area there that could be a bench, or a bench. bench. It could be a place to wait for the elevator. Exactly. Good call right there. I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the front. That's right there. Yeah, absolutely. This is not telemechanical engineers there. We talked about the meeting or something else. So, so that's the view of it from. Adam, why, why in this image, no, the one you just left, mm -hmm. why in that image is the rail? that's going up on the right side of the stairs, mm -hmm. not a handrail, but it's more like a baluster. Uh, I think we, at the last meeting, we talked about trying to make that much more attractive and beautiful, and we wanted it to match the rail design on the second floor, which is rolling all around that, that opening that looks down. Okay, you don't have that on the other image. From the, uh, from, from the elevator Oh, side. you just don't see it. This side no, here, you don't have it. It's on the inside. Yeah. It's oh, on, no, the, on the, the inside. inside. Yeah. I see. So it's just on one side? I see. Right. I, see. Right. I see. So this is just a view saying, well, if we wanted to put that rail there, we think it's a safety. It's not, we don't think it's a visual distraction. We think it's going to be something that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. We is, wanted to show it that. Is that code mandated, though? No, it's not code mandated, but it's something we would recommend. Mm -hmm. And you have it on the side where the stair goes. Uh, well, and if it was on the first one, it's on the left hand side because the stair goes. It, 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 where the stair is open, it has to have pickets. Correct. You couldn't be without pickets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. on the top. Yeah, it'd yeah. have to be yeah. no less than four inches apart. Okay. Right. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be allowed to just have a handrail. You could transition to a yeah. handrail there if that was something you wanted. No, but the answer was it was there in both of them. I just missed. Yeah, it. it's it's yeah, it's on that inside face where the there's uh, yeah. A fall. <laughs> Was there a negative with one of the, because uh, I thought we'd agreed on this one last time, so it came back this time, so I assumed you guys were pushing back, because I thought we'd all voted for this one and said, that's great, let's go. And then you were going to study the handrails, so when you came back with option A, I didn't know why you came back with option A. I didn't know if there's something you didn't like about B. Or the only issue is, and really architecturally, yeah. it's about once we do this, we need to read it. If, if this committee is, is comfortable with that elevation, we're good to go, right? Did, I didn't, did that bother anybody? Four symmetrical so openings up there? Before, mm -hmm. Yeah. Was before, uh -huh. where it was symmetrical and lined up, and we just wanted to be sure that the committee was aware of the decision to flip the stair, deal with the landing, that that, that has a, a relationship to that second floor elevation. If we're comfortable with that, we're more than happy to pursue it. We think it gives a much more generous. You know, Is anybody? Oh, that's good. Right. We're no, still fine no, with no, that no, stair. Yeah. 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 I don't know okay. when to throw my ball. I would, well, no, no, but I think you should do it within the council session. I think it's part of the council session. I can't vote on any of it. That's okay. No, no, that's fine. You can object. You can just say I'm abstaining. But this, CCAC is in charge of funding, so you can tell us, but we'll mean it. I mean, we can't do anything about it. There's nothing I can do. Who stands? Because we can't change the design to meet a budget unless council tells us to do that. So that's what kind of, there's something I could do today as the chair. Is that we can't change the, okay, thank you. Great. Okay, we're going to hop to the council chamber. Just want to move up to that. Were you looking for us to vote on the handrail on the corner? Actually, that would be helpful because we think it's important. It's not a total requirement. I think you want it, don't you guys? I think. Oh, the ornamental. I like the ornamental. Oh, that one, or you mean the handrail the, the coming corner? up at 45? Yeah, the one at 45. Yeah, I, th I think the corner is important. I do too. I think people will feel a little they'll, nervous they'll coming down that stair without it. Yeah, I would, yeah. And, I, and yeah. I think it'll just disappear, you know, once, mm -hmm. once you've got yeah. it. I don't think it's There's no pickets or anything. You're hardly going to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, have, I have a minor question, though. If you, if you did have an instance where you'd like to have it, is there a way to have it removed? You can sleeve it. You can put sleeves into the all asked, you know, at, I'm just saying from a cost standpoint, you know, because we're looking at a different type of 
setting yes. there, there are ways to do it. We yeah. have to design the sleeve system that, that could be oh. set. So it's expensive if you wanted to remove it. it. We probably would. Yes. We'd make a call, but yeah. yeah. You would design it to put it in, and then you may not. <laughs> have it. And just to be totally upfront about the cost, since we are touching on that, this does, you know, this landing is larger. There's more tile. There's more, there's more of the higher end finishes than the prior design. Mm -hmm. You know, because that landing was much, was much smaller. Mm -hmm. This is double the size. Just want to make sure that everyone is aware. Yeah, of but you have floor area that's not, you're going to have a little more tile, but the floor is the floor. Like, you look down on plan view, there's exactly the same amount of square footage of the ceramic flat floor tile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. It's just a little more of the, this one. Right. Okay. Okay, so we're going to council check right. unless there are no other questions. <coughs> Good, thanks. thanks. Okay, uh, Council Chamber. Uh, two items that we're going to discuss tonight. Uh, one has to do with the, the guy's desk, or the desk chair, uh, the raised dais, the sitting counter area, uh, the support, the EOC and support function, and all the functions that would happen in the, the, in the Council Chamber, and then the AV displays. So, touching with the desk first, a comment we heard last was a study of curved desk. I think we showed some pretty rectilinear, uh, and that they felt something that was more like this to help conversation be better. We'll, we will uh, we'll show you that. Uh, the raised dais, I think everyone agreed to look at a six inch dais. We're not looking at 18 inches. We brought it down to 12 and six. That uh, the kind of provide a screen location for the sink and the counter that is easily accessible. Well, I, I do have a question about that. Um, I, at one moment, it was it, the, the discussion was seven and a half or eight or something, because I think we thought that's what Hillsboro was. We weren't sure, and I think Ray would see was six. Was it a really, did you guys do a really detailed study of six versus seven and a half, or was it just, it, it, from a it felt, it was the ADA, it was the uh, ramp ADA up to it? The governor's okay. Plus, you know, six, you know, six inches, was, it could be seven, I think we could probably fit it. Okay. I think it should be a, a natural tread, you know, yeah, to step like up. Seven seven it's, that's half. what I think, yeah. I, if we're going to have a discussion on it, I think it should be a natural step That's my step instinct, up. too. Okay. Seven to seven and a half, yeah. study that for the ADA. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, the sitting counter, we, we relocated it to uh, its own room that can be screened, so it's not part of the council chamber, but it can be used if you're having an event. We're going to the EOC when people will be there 24 7. And then AV displays will show you how we're, we're considering locating those AV, those AV displays. Wonderful. Okay, so here is the uh, proposed design for the council chamber. And what we're showing in white are all the seating arrangements. Uh, and I think what's really key about this drawing. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to read, but you've got printouts, right? It's really what's happening in that storage area. There are two storage areas. There's one for the EOC, separated by a chain link fence and a gate, from what would be the, you know, the daily use of the proposed council chamber. And all and everything that would be used for daily use is in that, in that room, right? So just to kind of go over them, there's really, there could be more, but we're, just for, for conversation's sake, there are kind of four lives to the building, right? There's the life of, of the building when there's a council meeting, which you see here, which is 50 seats. You've got staff seating, six staff seatings, and a podium, right? So all of those can fit. We've shown them in there. Uh, stacks of eight chairs, I believe, two dollies. But you can see them all lined up against this wall. There are two dollies here, and then it shows you where all those chairs would stack. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the life of, of, of the building when it's in this mode, right? right? Which is the reason why we've got seven places shown? Two staff, uh, city attorney, and city I manager. See, they sit up on the. That's yeah, right. That's pretty right. typical. Right. Yeah. And and these are are movable. These 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 all move back into there and stack as does the, as does the podium. So everything there is, is mobile. Right. But this is the configuration that we have: fifty seats, six staff, and and the uh, and the podium. Right. Um, and I'm going to just kind of show you kind of what that looks like. So that's kind of the life of the building when it's in this mode. What was very important to us was to. And where are the tables? Oh, I see. Got it. And are those, they're, they're, they're not any kind of a thing. You just roll them in there, carry them in there, and stack them. Actually, yeah, so the larger circular tables, which I'll get to in a second, those are actually on a dolly. And there's a special stacking system that they go with. But these ones here, which are, they're about like this. Those get moved in. Oh, just like you would, yeah. Yeah, just mm -hmm. like you carry them in there. Yeah. Right. Uh, key elements of the design, we have these echo of those three arches. We've kind of drawn them into the doors and windows, and then all the way to the back wall. <laughs> Very important, so we have the door in the storage, this uh, kind of niche, which is gonna have a, a video display monitor in it, and the entrance to the, the, the area where we have <coughs> a sink and a place to prep, they all echo across to that elevation, so it's, it's a nice consistency across the space. And that has pocket doors if you wanna shut it. That's correct, right? 
it's not shown in the swing, but you can basically shut that off so all that stuff is not on display when that's in that mode, right? Two toilets in the front, nothing else really has changed that much. There's been a little bit of planning back here, baby closet, again, please hear me. I think there's been a little bit of change, but the idea is still the same, that you have the curved kind of dais area. You step down, you know, basically one step down to bring in an access to the police station through that doorway. Thank you. Okay. And that's what that starts to look like. We're starting to study daylighting right now, so we're looking at ways to try to bring in some daylight into this space during the day because it's not so dark, but that should make you feel much better. But that's an ongoing study. You can start to see the doorway into the storage. That's a niche for a video display monitor, and that's that doorway that leads into the kitchenette area and then placed at the opposite end, looking toward the dais to get a sense of what that might be like. The daylighting is a new thing, so it was worth some discussion. I would, if we're going to look at that, I would highly encourage it to be indirect. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we've been doing some modeling, and the last thing we want are some real hot spots. And I think we're starting, in our initial modeling, we're starting to see some of those, so we need to really study how those work. Yeah, the idea would be to bounce, to put the slot or whatever close to the wall so it would bounce off the wall and wash the light and not direct. Yeah, great. So you don't, somebody's not sitting under it getting banged. Exactly. It may not be clear glass, it may be some type of glass. Now that gives you a sense of those spaces. What size of screen are you proposing for the front monitor? You know, we had some of the requirements. I think it was 56 or something. That, to me, looks, it's at least an 80. It might be an 80. I have to go confirm. It looks like it's perfect to me. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I think it would be interesting for staff to know how far back, you know, what point typeface could be seen, that kind of thing, before they, before you finalize on the size of the screen. Okay, so this is now in EOC mode right here. So this starts to look at, you know, the, based on our program, the five, you know, 60-inch round tables that can be used. So that's what you see here. What's also, what you start to see are the mobile whiteboards that would be brought out on carts. So that would activate that space. The other critical things to realize is that they may need 380 stations, two to 380 stations, so they'll be able to use that main screen we were just talking about, this recess here, and if needed, there's also another opportunity to put in a baby monitor there. I don't think it's two. It went from three to two. But those are areas where we can start to look at. And then here it is in more of a situation like this. If there's a committee or a council meeting, you can imagine that working in that way. Everything shown there is also stored in the, I'm being handed something here. All screens will be LED. All screens will be LED. Yeah. We had lots of discussions about that. Okay. So that's that layout. And then finally, if there was some event space and you wanted to host a party or a commemorative event, you could use the EOC tables, but we also included three standing tables. I think those are 40-inch. You might have to look closely at that. But those could be placed outside standing only, so you could have those events. Those French doors would open up. You could see them. You could be able to use those. All of that does is vision that back here. There's also shelving storage. We've indicated on the plans for other types of equipment. And that's the next thing. Okay. All right. Questions, comments? So did we talk about this one? I really thought about it. Yes. Yeah, you did. Oh, you just did? I missed it. That's okay. Sorry. So Elizabeth was asking about this. So it's, you can start to count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tables there that are just like these that get brought out. And this would be for a meeting just like this. There's a planning meeting or a, you know, CCAC or DRC, any of those types of meetings. That's that configuration. And again, there's 56 seats plus right in the back there that could be used as storage for that. And there's room for more. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to summarize if that's okay. Yeah, please. So I think what we were most concerned about creating a dais that was curved, felt like a dais. We got the ramp to the side so that the dais could be pushed as far back in the room as possible to make most, the most space possible for the public. We reduce it to one step. 
we created a, a nicer kitchen at that can be used for a public function or it can just be where you get water for council meeting um, they verified that the storage for EOC and council works mm -hmm. they've showed the different layouts and they've shown how you put those things back in the closet so it's pretty thorough and they've shown it for a, if somebody had an event in there we, we haven't committed to doing that yet but council yeah. may want to let people do that so we'll see how people feel like Hillsboro, like yeah um, we've consolidated around LED uh, screen size we need to do a study so that'll really be um, know, just be a couple of you and me go to a store and stand in front of it yeah. 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 90 inch and see how far we can get away before yeah. we can't read you know what the CNN ticker says or something yeah. it'll be something like that it or does look like we've got enough wall space to enlarge if we need to we could you know? it'll just be budget yeah yeah well of course yeah and, and if it gets too big, then it'll go to projection. That's how it's going to be, yeah. yeah. But it's about 7500 bucks. I had a price the other day for, I think, an 80 inch is about $7,500, which is, and in uh, two years from now, it'll be 500 bucks. I think that's what I think. 3500 bucks. There'll be a new model, yeah. But, and it, it, there's a big AV conversation for me, just kind of, I wanted to uh, reinforce that, I think, based on your visit to Hillsboro, yeah. where, you know, council members, if they're, when they're sitting there, they don't need to look at that. They're going to have in front the of them. Screens yeah. And yeah. Are going to be, are, will be their pads. So they'll be able to see what's happening. The presenter will be able to see what's happening on the large screen behind, as well as anyone in the chamber attending. They all see something close up on the yeah. chamber, So I think that's who Clyde was worried about was the people sitting in the back row. In the back row, and they're, and they're on this side, and they're trying to, that, that screen on the side is fairly small and it's constrained where it can yeah. be. So you're yeah. really looking at the one in the front. I think that's Does the yeah. RS have a, an AV consultant? So that sounds like the sort of thing that they could do. Steve and I don't have to go to Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go to Best Buy. It's fine. Our consultant can go with you and Steve to Best Buy. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay so any comments or questions about this one? Because I, I think it feels like they did exactly what we had. Okay, great. A nice job. Yep, thank nice you. Job. Yep. All right, so I think we're done with item A, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we go on to PB. What's that? Well, PB's next thing on the agenda. Yeah, we're going to see how we do it yeah. time. Yeah. So, uh, Eileen's going to do PB. And there's no presentation, <laughs> just um, the handouts. So. Well, let me ask. Our, our, let me ask a question. The, the subcommittee came out looking kind of glum. Okay. It's already uh, And I got the feeling that they're not prepared to make a recommendation tonight. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is it worth having the PB presentation tonight? Because if you're not ready, then we can use the time for landscaping, since Chris is not here all the time. I That's a call of that committee. I have no problem presenting it. I, what I said earlier is, why don't we just roll into the sustainability, which I think we're doing after mm -hmm. the meeting, yeah. because the, there are no issues with the PV layout per se, right. but it just kind of rolls into the conversation. You want to do it then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So agree. delay that for with council? Yes. Okay. Right. And then just do the yes. landscape. Then we're going to table that <laughs> until council yeah. starts. Yeah. 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 Maybe we'll have that. Clive, you have one of these. Dee Dee, you have one of these? No. We have Would you like lunch? They're at the table over there, too. There's the fun. We're not going to do it now. Right. But all the presentation material is over there already. So we're going to do landscape? Okay. Well, we're not doing it now. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. The landscape presentation is over there, too, in case you don't have it. All right. Yeah, I think there's one here. Does anybody need one? Chris, you're up. All right, so it's been a little while since I've been in front of you all. Um, last two times I saw you once was you the planning strategy for the kind of open house, um, talking about the low water use landscape, and the time before that was the program presentation. Um, just a quick recap of some conclusions from those last two. Uh, from the program presentation, generally, 
a second. So this is one where I, 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 I didn't remember the same thing. So I wanted to poll this group to see what other people remember. That's right. Yeah. My memory was we were going to eliminate it in front of the admin building, but we, were, we wanted to see one over here. What, what do you mean the water feature? Yeah. Is that not right? Didn't we want something to create white noise that was in the library scope of the project? Am I just, is that just my dreaming? Did we never I talk about that? I think it's a good idea, but I don't remember it in the conversation. We didn't talk about it. Okay. So it should just been my. We definitely removed it from the front. Yeah. Okay. All right. Which so we can talk what, about that. Which today is what you're on. saying, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. But it, over here, we don't have that discussion. Yeah, that's why I, I thought that's what we did, but maybe it, did, it, it wasn't a, okay. I'm the only one who remembers that, so. <laughs> You're a forward thinker. I have such a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> You're remembering it. And if I say it a bunch of times over and over, then it becomes a <laughs> <laughs> It's reality. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not, I'm not attributing that to anybody, just me. All right, okay, sorry, I interrupted. Thank you. In the previous design, First step, we had this kind of undulating wooden custom benches, which then went into the custom concrete seat walls in the June meeting. And at that meeting, we had the direction to just go towards the off-the-shelf benches, the Victor Stanley benches that I presented. So that uh, decision has been picked up. Um, all movable furnishings needed to be attached in place. That was a uh, direction. Um, we also relocated the playground from in front of the town hall to a very small space behind the town hall. And that has been picked up on the site plan as well. Um, in general, the furnishing type, fit, and finish were picked as we went through, um, generally going towards the Victor Stanley type, black, simple, easy to maintain furnishings. That was the general direction. Um, in the planting meeting, we didn't have great attendance, and we didn't really get any specific direction. So I have a few more images that we can talk about that today, just to make sure. So let me, let me highlight that one, because, yeah, I'm going to get ahead of you. Yeah, but you've got on there generally approved dry summer aesthetic. That was what was presented in the last couple of meetings. Yeah, I have some more images of that today. Yeah, no, that, that would, so that must have been a miscommunication. Or uh, there's been we, this group has not come together on is this you know all local um, stuff native? Is it generally less water you know lower water tolerance stuff from kind of all over the world you know whatever. Or is it, gee, this is lush Atherton Gardens with lots of Hetch Hetchy water flowing through the site and we want to dump it all over the place. This group <laughs> has not come together on that that's at true. all. Okay. That's and right. so that, yeah. that's probably, we're that's where I was worried we're going to need an hour. Because okay. this is very personal and you know, like, do you we like pink or gardens. purple, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I think the most important thing tonight, Chris, that, um, because uh, I shared this with a, a, a friend who's also in your business, mm -hmm. and the thing that he responded to, he said, it really needs to feel like a home, mm -hmm. more like a home <coughs> than less like a commercial space. That was probably the most mm -hmm. comment. He, you know, there were some little things like Western Red Butt's not going to do great here. You can have one or two, but it's not really. It's not enough sun, and you know, he had little, little things. But the big picture one was feels a little commercial for Atherton, that this is a community of 100% of homes. Mm -hmm. And so we, I think we just really want to feel that, those spaces as if you were at your home. Well, one of the things I would say to that is that when we move, once we get approval on the planting direction, which uh -huh. I still don't feel like we really have, and I agree yeah, with you, yeah. um, the texture that you can get in planting, because a lot of the kind of furnishing things that make it a little bit higher end, a little bit maybe Sonoma Chic feeling, is something that we can make really nuanced. And I think the idea of having a really kind of complex planning plan, uh, but we would want to know what, what world we're operating in. And how do we maintain it? Because right. we're not going to have phenomenal maintenance. In and that's the other critique yeah. that I heard is that having too nu nuanced, yeah. um, it needs to be simple yeah. maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's a little, that's a balance. No, it, it's a tough challenge for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> so I think I'm going to blow through some of this because we've seen it all. Mm -hmm. Um, the only big change on this lesser plan, other than picking up these comments from the summer, is that we are keeping the water line. Oh, yeah, you can't see my um, red dot. We're keeping the water line because of that. We needed to adjust the deck and the deck ramping to pull it off of the easement from that water line. We couldn't have the structure over that. Um, so I'll show you some renderings of what that looks like later on. This was the adjusted uh, program plan. The big difference from this is moving the playground from the front of the town hall 
fenced in, it'll be a fenced in space targeting smaller children so that they can have an enclosed space to let them run around um, when they're on breaks from activities in the library and such. Is there access off the deck? There is unfortunately not access off the deck because there's a giant uh, mechanical structure back there um, that's actually even bigger, I think, now than what I have in the sketch. Um, that's going to prevent that. So they're going to have to walk around. So that's can they, can they access yeah. that play area from oh, the children's part of the one. library? <laughs> it, it doesn't sound indoor outdoor at all. It sounds like it's this thing that you go over the river and through the woods. It is kind of. Uh, yeah, it's not going to work. It's, it's not really no. a playground. No, it's not it's like the playground in no. the park. No. It's a play area. It's a player that's it's a player. You gotta go out. You, mom's yeah. gotta leave the. Everybody's yeah. gotta leave the library and go out to it. I think there might have been. Sorry, to but there might have been some also thought around it being something to support the summer program. I believe. Right. Uh, that the library may be doing. I guess that's currently happens, and I think they do. There's an area there. It's yeah. really small, though. It's small and it's area, dark so. and damp, and yeah. Yeah. Is it a bad it's, that's it's a bad place. Place. Yeah, yeah, but that's not the, the, the that, that is actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's right. Right. Exactly. Any sort of playground really they needs right to be indoor outdoor. Right it needs to. You go right from the library. It's secure actually, from it's the library. Yeah. 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 And just, and just, just as a reference, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Just from the last time we talked about this, the reason why I was directed to be back there from. I still don't think that's a good place. You folks. I forgot that. And you guys didn't want the playground in the front of the library because it felt too messy, having some sort of broken out play space. And there was concern that putting it in the back. On Maple would upset the um, adjacent mm -hmm. landowners potentially. Mm -hmm. um, so this space is considered since there's already that space that they're currently using for this the same activity that would. We be hear the justification, but I don't think anybody wants it there. Yeah, I think it's dead. I wouldn't defend that. Do you want that. to go back to? I that would let that go. No, we do. No, I just want I asked them to re re respond because there's yeah. only a certain couple of places around there. Why do we so have them? Isn't there supposed to be a place that kids can go outside and read a book? Wasn't that the whole point? I, so we do have so reading gardens still in the back where there's plenty of seating opportunities for reading a book in the Redwood Dome. And it will also have some environmental education on stormwater infiltration. And we do have the large library front terrace that will be the indoor-outdoor experience for the library. I, I actually think that people who object to it should go walk through it because we did that. It's right now all ivy where this is. It's uh, it's under these trees right, right out yeah. here. Yeah. It's all ivy right now. It's not a bad space, mm -hmm. and there it's true. I I'm participated in the summer library program. You get active kids, and they're going to be running around. Yeah. And yeah. you wouldn't put them over there, in, like in the reading garden of the Redwood. No, Dell? because that's the in the. Uh, the yeah, the, ki the kids are in the front yeah, of the, the library. Kids, the, the kids actually were right. I was just about to say that the kids are presently located right where you see the maker yard <coughs> and before that. So That's right. Right, by That's right. right at the deck. So if you can spill out from... So is, are you saying that there's no opening between the deck to the playground that they can kind of filter? That's unfortunately a little bit because of the mechanical... He added another uh, piece of really? scene in yours. It looks like it's clear. They could go so through the maker's room. Piece of thing here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. There, there's, there's what is two ways to get there. Do they have to? From the building, from he the says there's a big piece of deck, equipment or something. Down, okay, see, that would be a right nice now, there, But they can go through the maker's room. And to yeah, that, right? that's another option. Well, the maker's room yard doesn't connect, at least in this picture, with the but playground or yeah. the play area. <laughs> we, we did not I know, but see, area. I had that same drawing, too. This is, I think, that, uh, I think drawing. I think that's a good idea. It, it also gets into purview. So um, I think this committee cares where we don't want it. And I think the library committee and, and the associated parties should care about how it programs with the library. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, library staff was involved yeah. in that decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the amount of space in the playground, we're not talking play equipment, right? We're just talking no. play, wood, play area. Right now, it's, it's just, it's just walks for kids.
me say differently. I don't think this committee objects to the playground location shown for the reasons we objected to it being by the library chairs before. Right. So I don't think we, 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 we don't want it there. I just wonder if the library programming is happy with it there. Does it really do for them what they want it to do? Yeah. And is the connectivity okay? Yeah, the connectivity doesn't Well, it's seem located right where, the li where the children's area is in the front. Mm -hmm. So maybe the connectivity is something that they have to work out a door or a path or you know, something minimal. I don't, I don't think it has to be a big deal. That's what I'm looking for. You know? Right. And so, I mean, we have the same uh, sort of setup as well as in Portola Valley where it is set aside. And so the kids do go out and outside. So we don't really have any uh, strong opinion where, it, where it's at. We, we like where it's at. Um, I think I we may have issues with it being connected to the makerspace because that's a different type of programming. And so if we're having little kids go back there, it just, and if we're having 3D printers out there or some sort of, I don't know, wood carving, I don't know. It's just, I think it's two different separate programming. Would you want access to it somewhere else on the back of the library? I think what you're referring to as the mechanical equipment, if there was a way to have a pathway in between there, that'd be great. So they just go around that corner there, what you were saying earlier. I don't know if that's a possibility. Yeah, we have a design lab, actually, that, that could provide an access for, for the design lab versus the makerspace. No, I'm talking about the mechanical equipment that's outside oh, oh, by oh. the patio. With the, is there a way to make or to just streamline it a little bit against so the building. Can I go between the two purple makers yard and librarian? And yard? then you could do like a really fun like <laughs> gateway. I don't know. Care. The question is, can you have can the playground have its own access into the library that isn't yeah, through the makers? Maybe room? right through the, the children's area. Can there be a door? So we the children's area? could look at pushing it, pulling it back. It is the best location because it is a pretty big system. It's the it's the uh, central plant. So you can study how you get to it's directly to that playground from the library. That's yeah. I, I okay. think the comment is the, the, the only path to the playground being against the property line there and the far side isn't the best solution and you guys should look at other ways to get to it. Right. All right. Grace, thank you. Right. Keep going. All right. <laughs>
character. So who's worried? Who's worried about that? Or, or maybe who likes what what is put in the, in the Well, I think in general we we the general consensus early on when we were talking about sustainability was drop tolerant. I, I recall, but how do people feel yeah. about native type species like this? Or I'm not sure whether we need to be. So before you go too far into that, the first the first binomial is who feels like we should we want an English garden, we want to water this thing a lot, and we want it to be lush twelve months a year. Like does anybody feel strongly that that should be on the table? Well that English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but on the spectrum of drought tolerant versus this is Atherton by God, we water our lawns. Like does anybody feel strongly one way or the other? I don't water my lawn. Yeah, I yeah. feel strongly. Okay. About this. So you laid it out, the two sort of categories you laid out were native California with, with the dry palette as represented in the upper two images, or a English garden green or tropical that, green. That's the two I understand. Yeah. And if you look at Atherton Gardens, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you have, people do a balance between grasses and drought tolerant. All of us are very conscious of being drought tolerant because of what we've gone through in the last three or four years mm -hmm. with other planting materials um, which you know are not tropical and probably not English garden though some people do have that but more in the middle. Yeah. And, and personally I feel like if our civic center looked like the upper two images most of the summer, that it would be disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I am very familiar with Buckeye because I'm around it a lot because I'm in the out now a, a lot and it's a beautiful plant for a month. Yeah. It's the best plant. It's the first plant to leaf out and it's really a lovely plant for that month. And when it goes dry, it's a really ugly plant. Yeah. And I don't think people would be happy with that plant. Yeah. So my, my feeling is, um, you know, Sunset uh, property at the corner of Willow and Middlefield, have you seen the landscaping that they're redoing? They're, I haven't seen the redo yet. Okay. Yeah. It's all drought tolerant, California native planting. And right now, I think it looks terrible. I was waiting to hear that. <laughs> it looks, <laughs> I mean, it looks scraggly. It, does. it looks, uh, and I have planted some of these um, grasses in some commercial buildings that we have, and you know, it's a maintenance issue. You kind of have to go cut them back, mm -hmm. and then they grow back weird. I mean, like on Sacred Heart along Emily Avenue in the swales along Emily, they had planted all these little spiky grasses. They come and shear them down and then you get little funky things and it looks terrible. It's not the right way to maintain those. Well, I tell the landscapers, but I mean, so I just don't want us to get into that uh, <coughs> mess of having it, you know, like the grass on the right hand side, the fountain grass, you have to cut it back and then it grows back weird and it looks bad. So I just, I think a combination. What would you do instead? Well, you? like for, um, I think what Rick said, we do a combination. I mean, in areas where uh, there could be a, a more wild look, you know, kind of a, uh, a, a stand of grasses in a uh, more native environment. But where people are going to be uh, walking, I think you need softer looking uh, foliage and under the redwood trees, clearly, you have to be careful about what you plant, otherwise everything will die, yeah. because it's so 
also acidic, right? Or right. Whatever. Right. So why don't we keep going? Are you okay. good? I'm good. Rose. I agree. I mean, well, I, 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 it's not that I agree. I, you know, I, I'd like to prevent having that brown look during the summer. And, I, you know, I'm just looking at you guys for the advice on how to <coughs> minimize that. You know, it would be nice to balance that dry look. I, you know, I'm trying to visualize this, how dry is dry. And well, what so the approach that I can take, and there's a, 